So this is a rocket launcher adapter plate for bicycle trainers. Uh, it takes your rigidly mounted uh, floor trainer and takes it, puts it on this platform, allows it to rock back and forth. Uh, this basic design works for wheel on trainers as well as wheel off. Uh, we'll cover the basic construction and then also the mounting of each style of trainer on here so you can build your own. So you'll start off with your deck and that is essentially a piece of plywood. Uh, anything from half inch up to three quarter typically works fine. The thicker it is, the stiffer it'll be. Uh, that's your primary piece, but I also like adding in uh, some structural members in here. This is just some scrap steel channel that I have, but presumably anything like aluminum or steel, uh, angle, tubing, or anything else that's shorter than about a half of an inch in overall height would work for this. And we take that after you cut your plywood deck, 24 inches by 32. And what I end up doing is taking the structural members, mount them about four and a half inches off center towards the back, one on the front, one on the back. And what that gives you then is a nice sturdy support so that when you're pivoting in the center and importantly have your trainer on the top, it helps eliminate most of the flex that might happen with a plywood only type deck. So you'll just mount those uh, structural members underneath. I've got holes placed about six inches apart and that just makes sure that you've got support in the center and uh, applies that strength to the plywood there. You'll mount a couple of holes here for the top which you'll see in a minute that go through and actually join to the base section. But the deck itself is pretty straightforward with just the plywood and the two structural members mounted underneath. Uh, use flathead screws so that you've got a flush top there and it gives you the most flexibility when you're looking to mount your trainer. For the base, what you're going to want to start with is if you get yourself a 1x4 piece of lumber, uh, standard 8 foot length, that gives you enough material to do all of these pieces and have a little bit left over. Uh, what you'll start with is two pieces of the 1x4 cut 32 inches long. One piece in the center here, this is the bridge and that's 24 inches long. And then you want two pieces that are cut 2 inches long each on that. So that again comes all off of that eight footer. You take those individual pieces, and where I like to start construction is with this center piece called the bridge. You also want to get some hinges. Um, I found right now that the two and a half inch wide narrow version uh, that just keeps that slightly tighter in terms of its position on the blocks there uh, works really nicely. So with that hinge, what you want to do is I also make a piece of shim here. Uh, one for each end, and it's three-eighths of an inch thick is what I'm using right now. The purpose for the shim is that if you take that and essentially clamp that in there, lined up flush on both ends, you can then position your hinge centered uh, front to back and left and right on this here so that you get it exactly where you want, and you want the center of the hinge in the middle of that gap. Uh, lay out and mark and drill your holes ahead of time, and then sink your screws in so you don't risk splitting the wood. Once that's done, you simply repeat that for both sides, and you end up with your bridge piece here with the lower hinge mount and then the upper hinge mount on that there for both ends. So with that center piece, the hinges, and the two pieces of wood, you then want to take that and join our other pieces. The trick I use for that is the deck that you've already made is the same size that you want for your spacing. So I lay out the two feet flush on all ends with the 32 inch width and front and back on the 24. Take your bridge, lay it out flush with this centered up in there, and then positionally left and right what you want to do is the hinge itself is slightly off center from the board. So you want to go 16 inches into the dead center and I move it about a 16th of an inch this direction. The goal being putting the hinge itself, the center of the hinge, dead center on that 32 inch width. So once you do that, you then pre-drill and screw this on here so you join the bridge to the feet. And that gives you the structure, uh, this eye shape for the base itself. What I like to do then on the bottom is I get these small grippers, uh, one inch variety diameter in the middle and then two inch on the four corners that I like. 
gives good grip on carpet as well as smooth surfaces so it keeps the base from floating around on you too much. So you mount those on there and the finishing touches for the top are a couple pieces of velcro cut six inches long, uh, standard width material. I put one side, so on the front end here for instance, I do the hook side and on the back I do the fuzzy side. That's just so you use an equal amount of the velcro on both the hook and loop side. Mount that in the middle on your feet and then basically just a small ways off of the bridge side here and I've marked these so that I can keep track as I'm moving the springs at exactly what setting I'm using for myself or anybody else. So once you've completed your deck and your base, the two are ready to be joined. Uh, I bring back in the shim stock that I used when I was setting up the position for the hinge mounts and the hinges. Simply slip those underneath there. That just helps set it up mostly square so that when you get ready to attach the deck, you simply set that up on top. Use a square to make sure that you're lined up all the way around on your feet and then pre-drill and then sink in your wood screws there. Again, you want a nice flat top on there so that you don't have anything erupting where you're gonna mount your trainers. So now we're onto the spring design after you've got your structure all done. I still have this left open so we can look at the springs a little bit. What I found works pretty well is any kind of closed cell foam, uh, EPDM, polypropylene, which is what this is, and anything will work probably. I've seen people use Nerf balls or anything like that, so feel free to get anything that you've got your hands uh, access to and can experiment with. And the basic idea with the springs is that you wanna go ahead and cut whatever you have so that you've got enough thickness. In this case, I cut a couple of blocks here so that my overall height is just slightly taller than the gap between the inside of this and the underside of the deck. The idea being is that you want to make sure there's at least a little bit of compression on the spring as it's sitting in its neutral position here with the deck flat so that as you go to tilt or center it up it basically wants to come back to that center and have at least a certain amount of support in the middle. So I take the couple of pieces that I've got, cut them the same size, in this case these are two inches by inch and a half. I cut those together and then using some Gorilla Tape just create a loop all the way around it so that I've got one block of a foam spring essentially. Now the nice thing with this is, is depending on the foam you get, you're going to need to play with the size or how many pieces of stacking material you have. So I've created in this case two different uh, sizes and effectively a different spring rate for both of them. Then additionally, once you get these set up, you attach a piece of Velcro to the bottom and if you want, you want to make sure that you match up your different sizes. So you've got a large one, for instance, that goes on the front in this case. You attach that onto there, one on the rear in this case. So both of those are attached. And the reason for the markings here, of course, is that you can simply slide these in or out. And the further they are from the pivot point in the middle, the stiffer that makes the deck. And as you move it closer to the center, then it makes it easier to move because your leverage on the spring is higher. So what I do is I make a couple different sizes and then I just start experimenting with exactly what feels good. And with the markings, you can keep track of where you're at. It's definitely a lot of trial and error to find the springs you like and the positioning that gives you the amount of centering force you want. Once you've got the rocket launcher assembly completed, the last major step is to mount your trainer. We're looking at a wheel on design here, standard A-frame like many of them are. And what you want to do to start with is pre-fit your trainer. So you position it left and right so that your axle is centered up over the pivot. And then front to back, wherever it fits, usually centered on there. Two ways that I've mounted it in terms of retention. Uh, on the bottom, you can use the little furniture cups. After it's positioned, you simply slide these underneath, mount them with wood screws. Or the other option you can use is simply skateboard grip tape or uh, sandpaper. Mount a portion of that, glue it or uh, put on with the adhesive underneath where your feet are going to be, and that gives just enough friction to actually maintain the position of the trainer on the deck in addition to the straps, which we're going to look at now. Uh, just use your run-of-the-mill tie-down strap with the ratchet so that you can put a good tension on there. Uh, I like the ones here that have enough length between the primary buckle side and the hook that you have a loop on here. And the reason you want to do that is on your loose end, you simply run the strap underneath around the top of your trainer and over there so it doesn't interfere with the axle at all. Little tension on both sides. 
And then with your attachment side here, do the same basic thing, loop that around underneath. Apply your tension on there so that your hooks and the straps are secure. And put enough tension on there a couple clicks past being fully tight so you've got good support on there. That locks it into either the cups or if you're using the sandpaper grip tape idea that it won't allow it to slide. Gives it stability and then transfers all of that load from the axles of your bike into the deck and then the springs for the tilting motion. So for wheel off trainers uh, like the Kicker, Hammer in this case, uh, Neo or Drevo, I take a little bit different approach. Uh, you want to start by positioning your trainer on there and make sure that you have it positioned left and right. Some of the trainers are a little difficult to tell exactly where the center of your axle is, so it can help to install a bike on there. And just make sure that your bike is directly over the center of the pivot that you've got. You can mark this, use a tape measure or plumb bob. Uh, I used a laser uh, to eyeball the position, make sure my frame was square. But once you're happy with your position, then what I like to use are these L corner brackets. And I mount two on the right side here, two on the left in this case, and one in the front and rear so that the trainer itself has a locked in position and can't slide forwards or backwards, or more importantly, left to right. As you've got it in there and the L brackets are holding it in position, then you've got your support legs coming out. And underneath there, I use a strap and buckle assembly, uh, one inch strap in this case. Gave myself enough length so that you can loop all the way around the leg one time at least into the buckle and then pull the strap tight so you're secure. Uh, in this case, you can see the hammer is actually pretty off center, very left biased. And because of that and the fact that they use the same length leg on both ends, that foot on that side doesn't fully engage the deck. So I just made a shim underneath that is directly underneath where the strap is and holds that firmly on there. So the strap's engaged like that and pulled tight. That prevents it from tipping or popping itself off the deck. And the only time that would really ever happen is when you're fully engaged on the full far side there. For a kicker, it would be roughly the same. Uh, center it up. I would use the L brackets in the middle to prevent it from moving left and right, as well as one front and back. And then through the diagonal legs, same basic approach on this one. Uh, Neo would be a little bit different. It's got its triangular shape, but you could take basically the same approach with a couple of L brackets laid out with it on there, and then a strap or two on each side to make sure that it's firmly held against the deck. In a Drevo, pretty similar. Uh, the center back position locked in with a couple of brackets. Same for the T in the front and then a strap up over. So this concept should work for most uh, smart wheel off trainers like that. So once you finish your rocket launcher and then mount your trainer on it, you'll end up with the overall height of your bike at the rear axle about three and a half inches taller than it was when you started uh, when it's mounted on flat ground. Because of that, I make two accessories that I think are pretty handy, one of which is a new front wheel riser, and I just set that up so that I have the ability to set it up uh, at least even, or in some cases, slightly higher with the front axle, one to two inches, um, just in terms of comfort or what you feel like as far as riding indoors. But the front wheel riser will get it up so that you don't have a nose down um, direction on that with the bike. Additionally, uh, to make mounting and dismounting a bit easier, uh, I build a center platform. You can do it out of plywood, a couple of 2 by 4s or anything like that for the legs. Set the height so that it's easy enough for you to get up and um, throw your leg over and hop on the bike. Uh, you want to make sure that it's not so high that the pedals will hit it under regular rotation and taking into account the fact that there's a little bit of tilt uh, at the extremes when you start rocking it. So uh, it doesn't need to be super high. You could start out at least even with the three and a half inches or so that the uh, rocket launcher is, or you could be just a hair higher than that, which is what I've done on this. So if you add both of those, make sure you've got a level or slightly nose up bike, and then mounting and dismounting quite a bit easier. With that, that's the rocket launcher build. Um, you've got your main rocket launcher, a couple of accessories that we have there. I'll be linking to a PDF with detailed drawings, build materials, and dimensions below uh, to give you a little more detail than what I gave in the video. 
but the essence is covered in here. So hopefully that's enough for you to build your own and uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Uh, and I'd love to see any of your guys' designs if you get something built up and let me know how you like them. Thanks.